Hi, welcome to this tutorial on the new Sword Deluxe bot. Now this uh, software or bot, we'll call it a bot which is means betting software, has now uh, gone through, as you would have seen in the sales video, quite big changes. So what I'll do first off is we'll go through the changes, uh, highlight the changes, and then we'll get into each aspect of the bot. The first thing we'll notice is up here now, we've got the back and the lay tab uh, backing for obviously backing horses, laying for laying horses, and then the new one, Dutch. So Dutch is backing either win or place. So we do um, the backing Dutch is the new one there. Plus you'll see along the top here now, we've got 10 tabs, and we'll go through the tabs a little bit later. And also, We've got the log there, so you can check on how the bot is uh, assessing each race and that if you need, if there's a problem, if the bets aren't getting on, then you go into the log and have a look. Other features that we've got um, is the Mexican Wave, and the Mexican Wave works in with the tabs up there. So that's a new one. Also new down here, we have got um, to allow non-handicap or handicap races so we can tick or untick if we only want say non-handicap or if we only want handicap Please note here it only works in the win market um, Using these tabs because when it comes to the place market Betfair don't differentiate um, In the place markets whether it's handicap or non-handicap therefore we can't determine which is which in harness racing is also the same when we go to place bidding we have manage to alleviate some tracks but uh, keep in mind harness racing will show when you're place bidding some meetings but you can overcome this and I'll explain how to overcome placing bets on harness racing in the place market if you don't want them to be. Um, the next thing there is the uh, there's an in play keep in play if you um, want your best to go in play well then you can tick the in play box even if you've got it marked up here as a pre-play one and the bets haven't been taken up then you can if you've got keep keep in play then uh, the bets will still try and get matched to the criteria that you've set up here okay now the other big thing is the selections um, we'll show you them just uh, just use those menus hang on if we click on the side there you'll see there first second third fourth fifth favorite so you can nominate which uh, where in the market you want to be and then of course we've got win and place there um, this one here is running the place second favorite what else is new um, We've got now how to refresh the markets. Um, also, if we look at the markets, just uh, looking at the markets here, now we have all the race venue. If we go to the venue there, if you, for example, want to block a whole meeting, you just go into the race venue and untick which meeting you don't want. That's over and above the filters that you have up here. Okay, so you can see there Australia, Great Britain, Ireland, uh, Af South Africa, Russia, uh, USA, USA, sorry, New Zealand, and other. Which ticking that will give you give you Singapore, etc. Other races that aren't run the mill. Auto re reload. Um, if you're running this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, then have auto reload ticked, um, and it will uh, refresh every hour. Um, Current vets obviously shows the current vets. We've got a, a bet there now at the moment. Also, um, cancel bets and results of all the bets that we've had. Okay, and we'll go into those in a little bit more detail. So, so that's showing basically the additions. Oh, sorry, one other addition that we've got here that I've missed is the. Uh, in the backing is the profit delta, which is not 
which is not in laying, but the profit delta is after a losing bet, whatever you put in that profit box there will be added to each bet. So say for example you're trying to get win the 10p um, target on the first bet. If that bet loses and you've got uh, you're using a recovery stake on it, then it will add another 10p to it so that you're trying to get 10p uh, 10p target plus a profit delta of 10. So you're looking for a 20p plus your losses. So it means at the end of five races before you hit a winner, for example, you haven't just won your 10p, you've won your profit delta that's been added to each race. So in the case of adding a 10p, it would be a 50p um, profit after five races, whereas traditionally you would have just got the 10p profit. Okay, so essentially they are the new additions to the software over and above the the original stop at a winner which was just the first favorite and uh, didn't have profit delta etc okay so let's start now and look at each tab individually first of all when you open the software and set it up the most common problem that we find with tab software is that the tabs aren't um, enabled. See the little enabled box here? You must enable the tabs before betting will, will be taken. So if we just go through, you can see I've got up to bet up to tab six and onwards for me, it's not enabled. Um, when I've been using the stop of the winner, I haven't been using the Mexican wave option. And I suppose it's a good time just to talk about the Mexican wave option. If we click the Mexican wave option, so with a tick there, what that means is is that the bets will go through each of the enabled tabs and then back to the beginning again. So in this case where I've got five tabs, it would place a bet in one, then two, then three, then four, then five, and then go back to one. If you don't have it ticked, what it will do, it will go to one and then when the next bet presents itself, if one is still um, still betting, then still waiting for a result, it'll move to two, and then it'll move to three if one and two are, are being used. If uh, one has become clear again and the next bet comes, it wouldn't go to four, it would start at one again. And that's how I've used, um, that's how I've used it most of the time, as you can see here in the tab indicator and results, one, one, two, um, okay, the one and two are being used there, then you can see that we've gone to tab three there. So that's what Mexican Wave does, it, it, allows, it rotates through them, so if you've got all ten ticked, it'll go through all through ten and then come back again and start. Now the advantage of using the Mexican Wave is if you want to micromanage um, your tabs, for example here, if we look at it, we can see tab one has a profit of uh, 5.74 well we can go into this box here and we could transfer we could put two there for example and we could transfer it to another tab so we could put the amount to from the backing to tab say tab four to for backing and it would transfer that two two pound profit from tab one into tab four. Okay, so that would uh, that would stop a, a tab getting out too far in your loss recovery. So that's how the tabs, that's how this uh, transferring of tabs works. Uh, just don't want to transfer any money out of these at the moment, so I'll just leave it like that. And then you would click send if you want to do it. Now also what we've got in the tabs now is to clear. So we can clear the lay amount, which is the middle one there, or we can clear the back, which is this one here, or we can clear the Dutch, which is the end one. So we can clear tabs if, uh, if we want to. That's all part of managing each tab. And then if we get, click on log, what the log tells us, we just scroll down, it tells us um, why a bet wasn't being placed, etc. So if you don't see bets going through, go in here and have a look. You may find, for example, that um, 
there's the stake there and you can tell how much is it may say no bet because um, the current market value if you look at there the current amount might not be enough for what you you know for what you've set in how what's your minimum liability um, minimum market um, capitalization before it will place a bet so if I had 2000 for example and the market's at 1100 it would not place that bet because it didn't meet the value okay so that are the tabs there um, the show market if you click on show market it will show the market in the box here now the problem by doing that is the API requests jump up and um, because you don't really interested in what the market's doing because the bot is working to the rules that you've set it there's no real need to have show market but if you want to keep an eye on what's happening then you can do so there um, we'll just back on down the races here you can see these are all the lay ones and so if you didn't want to lay it say for example you didn't want to do the all weather you could untick that and the all weather tracks won't if you go through just one thing I must mention if you untick a track here because you don't want to use it you need to untick the auto reload because otherwise when it comes to reload in an hour's time it will automatically add the Chelmsford city meeting back in so if you are going to deselect races please make sure the auto uncheck is unchecked the auto reload is unchecked okay right so what we'll do is we'll go now and look through uh, one other thing up here commission you can see there I've got eight percent on the commission because I roll my uh, software from Australia through to England and Ireland and back to Australia I've got my commission set at eight because in Australia the commission ranges from about six to six point eight so by putting eight I'm actually trying to win a little bit more than my 10p or whatever it is and that covers uh, right through so when it's betting in England I'm actually getting three percent more commission allowance so my return is higher so I just run eight there but if you're only betting in the UK you, you would just run your commission at five or whatever discount rate you're on okay so let's have a look at back so if we're looking at the back we have the choice of win and place and we have the choice on the five markets so this one, as I said, it's a place market and we're bidding the second favourite. We've set the minimum prices. It must be 1.4 before it will place a bet in the market. If the second favourite is at 1.2, for example, it won't place the bet. And the maximum price is 5, which is just an arbitrary figure because obviously we're expecting the place market, the second favourite, to be well and truly inside that. Then you've got the choice of betting before play, before they race or in play during the race and 60 seconds or, or how long before the race do you want the bot to go and look for the bet. Minimum matched amount, so if you're betting in the place market obviously this minimum amount has to be reasonably low because the place markets, especially in Australia and New Zealand, aren't that high. So. If the market is under, if there's under a thousand pounds, dollars or euros in that marketplace, whatever your account is set to, if it's under that, it won't place the bet. If it's over it, it's a playable bet. Now the profit delta is what uh, I just mentioned briefly before. This is the amount that you want added to every losing bet. So every losing bet, I want 10p. That's why I've got 0.1 there. 10p to be added to every losing bet. Um, you can have it and at backing delta the delta is only on the backing the lay and the dutch doesn't have it minimum runners um, in the place market you certainly wouldn't want to go below five because um, below five you won't get to place dividends so i've just set them so you can set them however you want here now this is the important part um, this is the staking section that we're looking at here so the first one is here stop at a profit target per race so I'm only trying to win 10p a race here okay so that's my target is 10p and I have it ticked here if I get my target profit then I want the software to restart or to continue on a new cycle if I tick untick that when it reaches its 10p profit it would stop betting 
until such time as I restart it again. Now stop at a profit each tab. Once again, if you are, are wanting the software to roll over and keep starting again, then these figures become arbitrary. It doesn't really matter. These figures are important if you have these unchecked because it means if you get to a profit on a tab, you want that tab to stop and no more betting on it. And consequently, if we've got all tabs set here at 20, if we make 20 over the whole, so in my case, five tabs here, then the software would stop betting if it was unchecked. By having it ticked here, we want the software to, to restart. Every time it has a winner, restart back again at the beginning. And that's what it will do. Stop at a loss. This is probably the most critical part of the software. So just make sure you get this in your head before you move on from this section here. The stop loss must be passed before it comes into effect. Okay, what that means is I've got 15 here at the moment, right? So if my, I've had, say, for example, four losing bets and I'm up to 1450 in, in losses, it will still place the next bet, because I haven't reached 15, it will still place the next bet for me to win back what I have lost plus my profits that I'm chasing. So in that case, say for example, the second favourite was paying, let's keep it simple, $2 or £2 a place, and my losses are fourteen fifty, and my profit delta, say, 50 cents, it's going to try and win me 15 profit. So you can see, even though I'm at 14.5, it's going to place a bet of about £15, dollars or euros, to get back my loss, plus my target and delta. So even though I've got 15 there, it's going to bet another 15, which is going to take it to about 29 or 30 pounds in staking. Once it's done that, then it will stop. Okay, it won't bet up to, to make the 15 and then stop because it's pointless, it won't recover the losses that we're looking for. So keep in mind, whatever figure you put at stop loss, you can go above it. And when we look at the lay, you can go way above it. So always keep in mind that the stop loss figure must be breached. Then it will, so then it will stop after it's been past that. Not underneath it, not just about there. It has to be passed. Okay, and that can be managed, obviously, if you're running the Mexican way, then you can look at the tabs and see, oh, well, that tab there is very close to it, and if you don't want it to go past it, then you can transfer profits from one tab into another. So that's part of managing your tabs if you want to do it that way. Now, the next thing here is continue with restart. So when we have that ticked, if we go over and our stop loss kicks in, it will restart again um, back at looking for 10p profit and carry on that way. Um, if you have this one to continue without restart, it will just keep on trying um, to uh, to recover losses and I recommend under no conditions do you tick that one. Always have it on this one here. Now before I go off stop loss, this here is for the loss recovery of, uh, of the staking. If you don't want loss recovery, if you just want level stake betting, so you want every bet just to try and win the 10p or the one pound, whatever it is, you don't want to try and recover your losses, then set your stop loss at at 1p. And that means, obviously, your very first bet is going to go past the 1p, so it's going to start from the beginning again, regardless of it's a winning bet or a losing bet. So if you want level stakes, Put in 1p or 1 cent or whatever your currency is there. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to start separating races and that here, this only works on the win market. So allow non-handicap. Um, allow handicap. So if you've got these ticked, it, it will only bet on those two sorts of races. Allow for harness. Once again, only in the win market, you tick that. 
and uh, it will bring up the harness racing in Australia and New Zealand and uh, they will appear over here. The in play, if you are betting uh, and want, want the in play, if the bet's not matched then you can keep that tip in play. So that is the backing tab for you. If we move into the laying tab, a lot of it is very similar. Okay, so on this one here in laying, we're in the win market, we're looking for the fifth favourite. Um, so you can see there, it's got the drop down menus. The fifth favourite, so my minimum stake is eight. It must be at least eight in the market and no more than 10. I want prepay. I just want to be in the play. Um, 60 seconds before the offer to look for the bet. Minimum amount matched, it's got to be more than a thousand. The reason I have it so low is because in some of the Australian racing, um, especially in the weekend, there's some low liquidity, so I'm happy to have it low. And my runners are set there. And once again, you've got your stop at a profit. I'm looking here for 10p profit, and then that's my stops there. Now, the important thing here is I've got a stop loss of 15. Now, in laying this here, I could, even though I've got my stop loss at 15, I could lose 150 if I had three or four lay bets go against me. Because obviously this is this is the stake, the stake that's being placed. You know, in laying, you can lay, you can lose a lot more than just your stake. So for example, we had a minimum, maximum price of 10, and we'd already we were up here betting, say, 10, another 10 pound to, to get our loss, you know, to recover our losses. At that, we're looking at 90 pound that we could lose. So keep in mind, if you've got 15 there, you could lose up to 150 or more. So in laying, I suggest that you keep your stop loss tab very low. Okay. Um, and then we've got the same staking uh, tick to continue if you want it after a loss if you want it to restart back at zero then do that and then once again you've got these here um, just you still got to tick them if you want those races okay um, even though, even if you're in the place market you still have to tick them just keep in mind that they won't be exclusive to these categories once again, you've got keep and play. So you may have a strategy where you want to, might want to back the first winner. I mean, the, you might want to back the first favourite. If it gets to 1.75, um, minimum price of 1.75, you might want to keep it in play, and that way the, the bot will um, action the bet. If that horse gets down to 1.75, yeah, it will lay it if you want to. Okay. I should have mentioned in the backing, I forgot down here, we've got the buttons stop, start, clear, and log out. So once you've done your settings and that, obviously you need to push the start button for the bot to start accepting the uh, settings that you've put in there. If you're halfway through betting during the day and you want to change the settings, please hit stop first. Okay, hit stop first. Uh, make your setting changes and then press start again. Clear means it will clear out the um, the losses. Uh, it will clear the staking out. Um, if you shut the bot down and then open it the next day, it will continue on the same cycles that it's already on. But if you click the clear, this will clear the lay the lay staking and consequently on the back if you hit clear clear it was it will clear the back staking okay so that's um don't worry if you close the bot down if you want to keep your if you've got a sequences running um the bot will keep those um, sequences recorded and will keep continuing on the next day okay dutch betting um you can choose win or place market uh, obviously pre-play or in-play, we suggest you keep it at pre-play. Um, your, your market liability, that's set at 3,000 this one. The minimum runners, maximum runners, 
then it's still the same. You know, how much do you want to win per race? Um, in this case, it's 50p. And your stop loss at a tab, stop loss at all tabs, similar to all three tabs, uh, all three back lay. And the stop loss of each tab. And here we have the opportunity to, um, in this case here, of untick the first favourite. So we want to Dutch bet the second, third, fourth and fifth favourite. In here we put the minimum odds and the maximum odds that the runners have got to be before the bets will be placed. So you can miss out horses or you can run all five or you can run just say, for example, if you only wanted to back first two in the market, you could do that. Don't recommend going anything under under a minimum odds of about three because what happens then, if you've got a uh, horse that's shorter than three in the market, it really pushes your um, your outlays up. So once again, though, it's up to you what you want to do. Also, tick what races you want the Dutch betting to to be on, and uh, tick in play if you've got a pre-play here. Tick in play if you want the bets to be matched in running. Okay, so that is the three betting tabs. You must always have start on the bottom before the bets will start working for you. Okay, and the reload back, reload, these reload buttons here, if you, start, if you change a criteria or deselect a country, then hit reload and it will reload them back up again. If you find, uh, for example, that a country that you haven't got ticked appears in the races, let's have a look, appears in the races here, then tick it and untick it again and then hit the reload button for whatever market you're doing because sometimes, for some reason, it just seems to stick. Um, but by doing that, then that will clear that country out of the races here. Okay, there is the manual for you to uh, get more information from, but I hope that this uh, overall tutorial shows you what it can be done. Oh, just one other thing before we go. The results here, you can see the results as it goes through. It's important when you've got bets and that going, don't turn the bot off until such time as the last bets that you've had have been um, cleared so that they appear in the bot, so they're already settled. So you wouldn't want to have in current bets, you wouldn't want to have bets here and then turn the bot off because then it can't talk to Betfair and it can't allocate uh, the profit or loss if you turn it off midway through a bet being settled. Cancelled bets, these are bets that have obviously um, been cancelled due to the fact if you're betting under Betfair minimum, then Sometimes the back and the lays don't get done in order to make the bet, so they just fall into the cancelled area. Um, and all results, so that's obviously your handy way of seeing how your profit's accumulating for the day. Um, and keeps an eye on, you can see if you're going to be in trouble somewhere. We can see here, we've had one, two, we've had three losing back bets there, so that's starting to climb up. So if we go into one, we can see that it's still green, which means there's still a bet outstanding, which is this one here from Belmont in Australia. This bet here has not been finished yet, so we've got no profit or loss here. So being green here, I would not want to turn my bot off until such time as this clears. We also have in current, if you find sometimes a race will get stuck there for some reason or another, you can actually click on it. Uh, I'll just show you here, and you'll get this. Are you sure you want to cancel this bet? While it's still against the tab, if it's sitting in here for some reason and hasn't cleared, that tab will be blocked until such time. But um, I certainly don't want to cancel this bet uh, because I want the re result recorded. So that's. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, the thing with the log, if you if. There's no bets appearing, go into the log and you'll soon find out reading through here why the bets aren't appearing. You may find here all the tabs are blocked up or something like that. Um, so those are the things that we've got to look at. If we go back now, Belmont. Um, so that the tab, learn to read the log because then that'll, that'll, 
you'll understand why bets aren't being made or why a bet was made when you thought it shouldn't be, then you can see it in here. Okay, as you can see now, all current bets have been cleared. So if we go into one now, we see that um, it's not green anymore, and we can see that we made a $4.23 or £4.23 profit. So we can see our accumulated profit is creeping up there. So we had the three losing bets there, and then we've had the winning one there, which is handy because it's the last race for the day in Australia. Okay, and uh, up here we can see the profit that we've made for our backing on tab one. Our, the middle one there is our lay. We're losing 15 pounds or dollars in our lay, and our Dutch betting is zero. If we wanted to clear the the uh, lay, if I click on here, it will clear the lay out of there. So if we go back to there, it should clear that lay. We can see there now it's zero. Okay, so uh, do experiment with it, and also the tab transfers if you're um, uh, if you want to micromanage the bot. But uh, generally, I leave mine just running 24/7. So thanks very much for watching this, and I hope the tutorial was of advantage to you. And it is quite an exciting bot to to have running, and um, I really enjoy it. Also, one other thing before I go. Um, but we've got three tabs there, so it means you can run three different bidding scenarios. So uh, with only one license, you can only have one backing strategy, one laying strategy, and one dutching strategy. So that still gives you three strategies to, to play around with. Um, if you want a second license, then we do do second licenses at a discount. So on behalf of Michael and myself, Steve, thanks for watching this, and uh, all the best, and we hope that you see value in this. Saw Deluxe betting software. Thank you.